Hi, Algebra 2 in Lesson 5 here from Chapter 10. We're going to be looking at the Law of Sines. It's going to be using sine to do a lot of different things with triangles. Here we go. First thing right here is looking at the area of a triangle using sine. This is not the Law of Sines. We're getting there. But first of all, if you know the side angle and another side from a triangle, this is kind of going back to geometry, you are able to find the area of that triangle. So normally we're used to finding area by taking one half base times height. But in this case, we don't know the height of the triangle, but we might know some other side length. So then we can find the area. Now in this section and the next section, um, we're going to be labeling your triangles like this. And you're going to see this a lot. The angles have capital letters. The sides have lowercase letters. And the matching side and angle are opposite each other. So angle A is opposite side A, angle B is opposite side B, and angle C is opposite side C. So in our example down here, we're going to label our angle or our triangle because it's not um, labeled for us. It doesn't really matter what you have as A, B, and C as long as the corresponding side is opposite the angle. So if I label them like this, that will work for us. These three formulas are all exactly the same thing. It's just showing depending on what sides of your triangle you know. Um, but essentially, if you know an angle and the two sides that are connected to that angle, that's what this formula is using. So down here, I have angle A and I know the two sides connected to that. So that's going along with this first setup of the formula. And I'm just going to plug in all of the pieces that we know. So we have one half times B, which we have labeled as 12, times C, which we have labeled as eight, and then times sine A, which we have labeled as 86 degrees. It says we want our answer to the nearest 10th. When you're using your calculator, make sure that you are working in degrees, but once you type everything in, that is your answer. So the area of this triangle is going to be 47.9. That's to the nearest 10th. So what we just did with the area of the triangle is not the law of sines. We're getting to the law of sines, and I just want to show you how this happens. It's not magic. What we have here are those three formulas for finding the area of a triangle. They're all finding the area of the same triangle, and so the area is going to be equal. So we can set all of those pieces equal to each other. Now we're going to just simplify and clean this up a little bit. The first thing we're going to do is multiply everything by 2 because two times one half is one. So that's gonna get rid of all of those one halves. Now to simplify some of these variables, we're gonna divide every piece of this equality by ABC. And now we're able to simplify some of our variables. For example, B divided by B is just gonna be one, so we can get rid of it. C divided by C is just gonna be one. And I just wanna show you what we're left with here once we've simplified. We're left with the sine of A, sine of angle A, over the corresponding side length. And we can keep doing this as we go through. We will simplify everything else that we can. And I'm going to circle what we're left with. And then we'll write out our final equality. Sine of angle B over side B is equal to the sine of angle C over side C. And all of these ratios are going to be equal to each other. This is the law of sines. So up here we have our law of sines that we just found and then that basic triangle that goes along with how it's labeled. And down here we have a summary showing that the law of sines allows you to solve a triangle. What that means is find all of the missing angles and side lengths. As long as you know either of the following two angle measures in any side lengths, which is angle, angle, side, or angle, side, angle. So as long as you know two angles in any side length, you can find the rest of it. Or if you know two side lengths and an angle that is not between them, which means side, side, angle. If you know that, then you can find everything else in a triangle. Here's our first example when it says solve the triangle. Again, that means to find all the missing pieces. Here's our law of signs that we just used. And I'm just going to kind of color code here. I know angle S and its opposite side. And I know angle R here, but I don't know its opposite side. So that would be one way that we could start this problem. 
So I've set up my proportion using my law of sines. I'm using the same variables that they are in this triangle just to keep things easier. So sine of angle S over side S, which is going to be 20, is going to be equal to the sine of angle R over side R, which is what we're trying to find. So I'm going to fill in what we know. And we want to keep this as exact as possible. So we don't want to calculate these sine values because they're in degrees or even be lots of decimals. We don't want to actually calculate it all until the end um, to make sure that our answers are as accurate as possible. So now I know that I'm looking for this side R. Um, it's in the denominator here. So to get it out of the denominator, I'm going to multiply both sides by R. And I'm left with R times sine of 40 over 20 equals sine of 49. Now I'm going to work to get r by itself, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 20 to get rid of that denominator. So I'm going to be left with r times the sine of 40 equals 20 times the sine of 49. And then lastly, I'm going to divide both sides by the sine of 40. And I'm left with r now by itself. r is going to equal 20 times the sine of 49 divided by the sine of 40. So it's best to put all of this into your calculator at the same time so that we're only rounding a decimal once. It's going to keep our answer more exact. And we see that our side R is going to be 23 point, we'll go to one decimal place, 0.5. I want to back up and look at how we solved our proportion here. Right here, we had a proportion where R, what we were trying to find, was in the denominator. Now, you maybe have heard of cross, multiply, and divide, and we did not do that as we worked through here. We were solving it like it was an equation. And when we got to the end, we got r by itself, and this is how we calculated it. So I just want to back up a little bit to how we started when we were calculating. Um, cross, multiply, and divide is a shortcut to solve these proportions. Cross, multiply means that if we're trying to find r right here in the denominator, we can cross multiply these two values that we know, which if you notice down here, that's exactly what happened. We ended up multiplying them. And then we can divide by that other value that we know, which is what we did right here. We divided by the sine of 40. So setting it up like this at the end is your shortcut. So now we're going to solve for angle T and its opposite side length, little t. Because all the angles in, in any triangle add up to 180, we can know that angle T is going to be 91 degrees. And so now we can set up a proportion to find side T. I am again going to use side S because those numbers are easier and there's no decimals involved. Here I filled in what I know in my proportion and I am going to use my shortcut of cross multiplying and dividing. So I know that t is going to equal, I'm going to cross multiply those two pieces, 20 times the sine of 91 divided by this last piece, the sine of 40. To the nearest tenth, we get t side t to be 31.1. When we look back at our triangle and I label that, this should make sense. When we're back from geometry, the side op opposite your biggest angle is going to be your longest side. The side opposite your shortest or smallest angle is going to be your shortest side. So you can use that to kind of double check that your answers make sense. When I'm starting to solve this one, I'm thinking about setting up my proportions. I'm noticing that I don't know any pairs of an angle with its opposite side. Um, but I do notice that I know these two angles. If I can find out the angle D, then I know its opposite side and I can use that in my ratio. I set up this proportion to solve for side E right here. So I filled in all the other pieces that we knew. And here we can use our shortcut. We can cross multiply and divide to solve for E. Here I've set up my cross multiply because I'm multiplying 9 times sine of 141 divided by the other piece, sine of 16 right here. So we found side E to be 20.5, and all we have left now is to solve for side F. And after setting everything up 
um, for side F. I used this sine of angle D and psi D to do this because just the numbers were a little bit easier. There were no decimals. And then I get side F to be 12.8. And so now we've solved for every angle, every side of our triangle. So we are done.